Hello, I'm Theodore Peters. In this video, we're going to examine the elective permutability possible in the iconic Garfield strip released on July 27th, 1978, known colloquially as the pipe strip. Of the three panels present in the pipe strip, there are six possible arrangements. Now, the original ordering is well known and infinitely humorous, but Taken together, the other five possible permutations collectively synthesize a chilling commentary on the nature of addiction. Here we can see an overview of the arrangements we will examine. First, the progenitor. Then I have given names to the other five. We have the absence of affection, the viscosity of thought, the resentment of apportionment, the community of vice, and the pervicacity of addiction. First, let's look at the progenitor. It's well known why this comic is so hilarious and such an enduring work of art. For a fuller analysis, I will refer you to the uh, John D. Bar B. Barrymore lecture, which will be posted in the video description as well. Here on the left, we see John reading a newspaper, idly searching on the table beside him with his hands. He puts down his paper. He looks up. He wonders to himself. He muses. Now, where could my pipe be? And then the smash cuts to the third panel. We see Garfield is smoking the pipe while out, out from the side, presumably from still from his chair, John calls out Garfield two exclamation points Garfield because he has realized that it is Garfield who has taken his pipe of course this is super humorous because cats don't typically smoke so the fact that Garfield took John's pipe to smoke it is funny and then John doesn't realize this at first but then he realizes it and that's funny as well the subversion expectations makes this a sublime piece of comedy let's look at this rearrangement wherein the garfield smoking has been moved to the second panel here we see john still reading the newspaper on the left groping on the table next to him but what is he groping for surely it can't be the pipe because he does not wonder about the location of the pipe until the third panel. No, he must be groping for Garfield, trying to pet Garfield. He's desperate for some physical form of affection. And in the second panel, he calls out, Garfield, Garfield, but Garfield is gone. Garfield has taken John's pipe. He has used as a substitute for this physical affection the crux of nicotine. And then in the third panel, we see John affectionless, isolated and alone. He too is now turning to the use of drugs. He wonders, now where could my pipe be? Now without the physical manifestation of affection, he's desperate for some sort of dopamine and he seeks the aid of nicotine. In this third arrangement, the viscosity of thought, John first wonders where could his pipe be? And then he's musing it over. He's trying to read his paper, but we see tragically his hand tremoring on the table beside him. This is symptomatic of withdrawal. He's dependent on the nicotine. It's gone beyond a compulsion towards a full-fledged addiction and then through them his mind muddled and addled by the influence of the drug his lethargic mind he finally realizes where it must be garfield he calls out but garfield is not there and john continues to tremor and this fourth arrangement the resentment of apportionment John wonders where could his pipe be. He immediately calls out Garfield, and then he returns to his newspaper, drumming his fingers on the table beside him in a gesture of impatience. What then can we conclude from this? Clearly that he knows that his pipe is being taken from Garfield. We must conclude 
that John and Garfield has have come to some arrangement to share their pipe between them. <clears throat> John calls out to Garfield because it is John's turn with the pipe and he needs Garfield to bring the pipe to him. But Garfield is, sits obstinate and statuesque. He refuses to bring the pipe. From the anger in John's exclamation, the double exclamation points, we can presume that this is a common occurrence, that when it is John's turn, Garfield is reluctant to relinquish the pipe. But there's more than that. Look at Garfield's dissatisfied, annoyed gaze. No, we can assume that Garfield, too, feels that there's some hypocrisy in it. That, too, when John's turn with the pipe is over, John is reluctant to relinquish the pipe to Garfield. And here we could see how the introduction of this addictive substance and what would otherwise be a peaceable cohabitation creates all of this strife. It creates this enmity between the two of them. So let's move on to the fifth arrangement, E, where we see the community of vice, how the influences of our peers influence us. John, he sees Garfield. He joyously explains, Garfield! It's been who knows how long since John has last met his good friend Garfield. But then John sees that Garfield is smoking, and John thinks to himself. He drums his fingers upon the table, and he thinks, no, where could my pipe be? He sees Garfield smoking Garfield's pipe, and he immediately wonders after his own. This shows how peer pressure is so dangerous and so instrumental to disseminating these addictive tendencies among people. Finally, the final arrangement, which demonstrates the perfectacity of addiction. Here, John calls out to Garfield. He's looking over his newspaper. He lays it down and he calls out Garfield. Why is he calling Garfield? What is he calling Garfield for? Presumably, we can only presume, John has found some interesting fact in the newspaper which he wishes to share with Garfield, the dissemination of knowledge. He, he desires Garfield, too, to partake in it. And John calls out because he's doing a favor for his friend. But we could see John's not particularly anxious for Garfield to come. He, he says, well, Garfield's not coming. I suppose then there's nothing for me to do but... But, but, no, there is, he's, as he gets distracted from the paper, he thinks, hmm, where can my pipe be? Well, Garfield has taken it, but John doesn't know this. Garfield has taken John's pipe and is prioritizing smoking it, enjoying the nicotine over the pursuit of knowledge, one of the most important transcendental goals, I think, of any sentient being. And John, now distracted from his knowledge, distracted from what we must assume he's taken up as a distraction from his addiction and from his dependence on nicotine, cannot help but wonder, where could my pipe be? And he tries in the third panel to go back to reading his newspaper strip, but we still see his hand, maybe absentmindedly, maybe with full malice of forethought, searching, trembling, searching for the pipe. He cannot ever fully go back to the idyllic pursuit of knowledge he once had before the advent of nicotine into his life. So what are we left to conclude? The chilling portrait that these five arrangements depict, what are we left to conclude? I think the obvious conclusion is that smoking is bad. There are many further areas of study that have not been examined here. Among them are per pixel rearrangement. Here we've looked at rearrangement of panels, but one could too reasonably rearrange the individual pixels in the comic strip. Pictured here is one such rearrangement. And this comic strip too is a really wonderful 
thought-provoking piece and to do a full analysis on it and all of the other rearrangements would be a too momentous task perhaps to undertake in this video. In addition, there's a question of reduplication. Here we saw a rearrangement of the panels, but there's nothing left to prevent us from using the same panel more than once. This extends the number of possibilities from 6 to 27. This is one such example. We see John call out Garfield. Well, Garfield smokes a pipe. Then again, Garfield. Then again, Garfield. And through it all, Garfield sits impassive and statuesque, just idly smoking his pipe. So obviously there's a lot to study here. And then, of course, we talked about per pixel uh, arrangement and reduplication, but we can combine the two and we have per pixel reduplication. We have comic strips like this, which just reduplicates a single pixel of Garfield's fur coat across the entirety of the three panel structure. And obviously comics like this too have a lot of hidden depth that needs to be analyzed. And there's no doubt that Jim Davis kept in mind all of these detailed considerations as he was making this transcendental, perfect work of art, the pipe strip. Uh, if you'd like to cite your this resource, the IEEE citation is as follows. Thank you for watching this video.